Zane Clodfelter, and Preston Leinenbach. It's our Otters TV series wrap-up after Evansville swept a doubleheader on a thirsty Thursday. A great crowd, over 2,700 on hand, and an interesting series. We've had a couple of these series impacted by rain. Started off on a pretty sour note. Tuesday, Austin Gossman, the Screaming Eagle, went seven and a third, gave up just one home run, a solo shot to Joe Lytle. That ended up being the difference. Yeah, another great outing by Gossman. He continues to prove that he's uh, he belongs here with the Otters. He's been sensational pretty much every outing that he has had so far. And I think he's opened up a lot of eyes, not just within the organization, but outside the organization as well. And just a, kind of a tough luck loser in that one, not getting the run support that he probably would normally expect from the, out, the offense of the Otters. But, yeah, just the one solo shot to a former Otter and, and Lytle. It was interesting because we were used to seeing Austin Gossman with a 0, 0.00 ERA, and then after he gave up the home run, now his ERA is an unacceptable 0 0.33. Minuscule, unacceptable. Yeah. So rain happens Wednesday afternoon, washes out that game and creates the doubleheader situation today, which was impacted as well because it's supposed to be a 4 o'clock start. We started an hour later, but then once it began, it looked like for a little bit in game one of the doubleheader Thursday, we were going to have a repeat of Tuesday. Yeah, it looked like that for the longest time between uh, the star of Brain Scott making his second appearance for the Otters. Again, looking great. Uh, these new guys are really stepping up. They're stepping right into the fold for the Otters and really playing a big time role. And then Edgar Martinez for Florence, also a great outing. Then he got a little bit out of shape toward the end there. I think he made some fatigue was starting to factor in as he was starting to kind of lose control of his pitches, which led to a big inning for the Otters. Braden Scott, the Indiana Hoosier, he got the victory. He's now 2-0. and And really, I think the game changed when Miles Gordon, the Canadian on Canada Day, which I'm stealing that from Ryan Brown because he did the research. He hit the solo home run there. Made it 1-0, and then the Otters able to capitalize on some inconsistent pitching from the Alls. Yeah, that's exactly it. That was the spark plug they needed, the leadoff hitter. The Edward Jones leadoff hitter for the Otters. And there like you go. Said, I like what you did there. Nice little plug right there, right? And for Miles, I think you just see when he rounded the, the bases and came to home plate, it was such a huge relief for him to see that ball go over the fence, and hopefully that'll be a big breakthrough for him now. Get that nice little streak going in with a nice solid day overall, the doubleheader for him. Right, and then game number two, the Alls take a two to one lead, and then Evansville's offense came up big again. And that's just what this team does. They continue to fight, they don't quit, continue to battle and come from behind, put up some big rallies. And like, again, just kind of waiting for their moment. Like. That's the thing. A lot of teams, sometimes they're not patient enough to wait for the offense to kind of come to them with bad pitching. And they took it themselves and had a great offense there toward the end again in the second game as well. And it's important to remember this was a battle for first place in the West Division of the Frontier League. Evansville taking mm -hmm. two of three really set themselves up pretty well here over the short term. It was interesting. I said this pregame in the press box to you and Jordan mm -hmm. Fisher and a couple others. It's interesting. There were three different options coming into the doubleheader today. Either the Otters were going to have a four-game lead in the division, the division was either going to be tied, or it was going to stay the same at two games, and luckily for Evansville's sake, it's a four-game division lead. Yeah, way, if we just bounce back and take the series, a big series, obviously against Florence right now, the two-horse race right now in the West Division, and 23-9. and nine. That's just an insane start. That's a college basketball record, not that, a baseball yeah, record. Yeah, that's a, I mean, just a historical start for the Otters continues, and, you know, credit to to the team because again we had so many question marks going into this year and yet boom here we are as, a, as an organization 23 and 9 and just continuing to push forward another division battle coming up this weekend on the road at Gateway. Gateway and our good friend Ryan Brown he had the call on Otters Digital Network on Frontier League Live TV with our pal Bill McCune. Ryan any observations from this series and more importantly the Thursday sweep in that doubleheader? It's a question of do you care to impress? <laughs> the doubleheader sweep you drop one of those games, which I think is something you expect. It's hard to sweep a doubleheader. You might see teams in the West Division saying, look, they bleed. The Florence Yalls took two of three, but no, with that sweep taking the series, you almost wonder if those teams are starting to look at Evansville and think, man, this is a juggernaut. And you got to think, too, the bullpen is in pretty good shape even after the doubleheader going on the road to Gateway for this weekend. And that's huge because right now, just based on the situation with the injuries with this roster, the team kind of had to flip-flop the numbers this week going with 13 position players, only 11 pitchers on the staff. 
actively, that is, and yet and combined between both games only had to use four pitchers, two starters and, and Sawyer and Wright tonight. And so that says a lot about this team, the depth that they have, what they can do. And, of course, like I said, the newcomers coming on in the last week, throwing O'Reilly with Scott and Gossman as well. And it just sets up for a nice, solid week in ahead, I think, and you know, keeping some of the, most of those guys rested up for the series in Gateway. So Independence Day weekend, the Otters are going to be on the road. Ryan Brown will have all three games on the Otters Digital Network on YouTube Live TV. And if you're grilling out by the pool on Sunday on the 4th of July, put Ryan on. He'll entertain you for a couple hours at least. And then an off day on the 5th, and then the Otters are back real quick. For the mm -hmm. first of six, the Joliet Slammers are in town, and we're going to focus real quick just on those three games. A Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, tacos, nachos, frozen margaritas, and of course discounted Modelo and Corona, two fifty for those. Uh, can't, can't beat that, and of course there's also walking tacos as well. So. And there might be a yeah. rally taco too, you never yeah, know. Yeah, man, might be, need a rally taco appearance on Taco Tuesday. And then uh, Wednesday, get the cheap $2 general mission tickets for seniors 55 and older, courtesy of Senior Connection. And then Thursday, it's the series finale, mm -hmm. and that has now turned into the Jacobs Village benefit mm -hmm. game with Sinorama and post-game fireworks. Now, we announced it, and we were able to confirm it during the second game. If you went to the Otters game on July 1st, which was supposed to be Jacobs Village night and Sinorama night, and you still have your ticket because there were no fireworks, the Otters are gonna let you take that ticket for the finale against Joliet and get in for free. You just have to bring that ticket from that July 1st game. That's exactly right. It's going to be a big night. Originally scheduled for, again, here today, July 1st, now for July 8th. Free popcorn by Wolk Financial while supplies last. Door prizes as well. Uh, you mentioned the sticker giveaway with Sakurama, the fireworks. You know, we had some fireworks going on behind us in the backdrop of Boston Field and the surrounding neighborhoods as well. So, yeah, definitely want to come back out and, of course, Thirsty Thursday in itself is a big hit. So. I appreciate the neighbors because I had to make that announcement in between games that the fireworks got pushed back a week and I got booed. And I was told <laughs> to make that announcement so one of the neighbors must have heard people booing me. They got your back. They had my back and we still had fireworks at Bossy Field, both with the otters in the suite and then literally across the street on Heidelbach here in Evansville. So really fun weekend, 23 and 9 as Preston mentioned. The otters are still in first place and they're going on the road. He's Preston Leinebach, Ryan Brown, the filmographer. Fantastic. I'm Zane Claude Filter. This has been Otters TV.